and certainly in the last um, century, we were definitely were forgetting about the other 80% and focusing on the 20%. And now we've got the possibility to have these new voices come up. And um, something else I kind of brought up into this chapter was um, of Michael Thompson's cultural theory. So Michael Thompson said that in, in modern society, we're always in this danger of swinging between two extreme viewpoints. So we've got the kind of individualistic view on one hand, which is like the free market economy. And on the other hand, we've got, we've got the hierarchical view. So, so for example, you've got the banks all kind of just doing exactly what they want to do with very little regulation, and then you have the crash, and then you have governments coming in and saying, right, we own the banks now, and we're going we're gonna to set the rules. So you've got this kind of pendulum swing. And he said there are other voices that aren't heard. And uh, I know it didn't really happen. The government's trying to set the wrong topic. We're, we're back, to the, uh, back to the individualistic again. But, but um, Thompson said there are these other really important voices. So there's an egalitarian voice, for example, which is, you know, what about, what about people? What happens to them? Uh, and, and the internet. And when I asked Michael Thompson about the internet, he said, yes, it's fantastic. It, it's got this great potential to enable these voices to be heard. He said it's clumsy by design. And when Michael Thompson says clumsy, he means that it's really fantastic. <laughs> he talks about clumsy solutions as being these kind of solutions that involve lots of different people and, and that aren't perfect for anybody, but they're just kind of accommodating on lots of different views. Um, and I could go on more about that, but I'm, I'm not going to, to, to uh, get to the bar. Um, and Craig Neymar, I thought, was just such a, he's, he's just such a lovely, typical person. He really listens. And, and this is one of his kind of nice little quotes about how you've got to let the consumers and line rights do stuff. They're the people who know how the business should run. In hierarchies, you've got problems. But the people who are good at climbing up the career ladder, they're good at climbing up the ladder and not much else. That's why hierarchies are dysfunctional. So try and stay flat. And he's got this massive global organization. And I think in the, in the San Francisco headquarters, they employ like 16 people. So he, he really is into this flatness, and, 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 he, and he, he's not too executive. He calls himself a customer relations manager, and he just sort of spends all day like kind of going onto the website and kind of looking through and seeing like who's, who's engaging, and then he's engaging and doing nice things, and he'll sort of send them an email and say, oh, why don't you become, you know, can you be manager on XYZ? And then he finds out he's kind of behaving badly and tells them off. And, you know, he's just, he just genuinely loves people and is a very humble, humble guy. Okay, I think we're... Final one, this is the final behaviour, generosity, uh, and this is uh, all about all about sharing, obviously, and and, uh, and the real sort of like underlying trend here was there was a sort of trend towards collaborative innovation that was taking place online. So you're getting people, you're getting things like crowdsourcing, uh, and, and you're getting things like Creative Commons, and, and, and a lot of these are inspired by or informed by the kind of free and open source software yeah, movement that's been going on for, for a lot longer. Um, I think one interesting example uh, is Procter & Gamble. Uh, they were really suffering in, um, in 2000. Their, their share price was plummeting. And, and they, they thought, you know what, we're just not coming up with any innovative ideas anymore. We seem to be really kind of missing out. What we're going to do is make sure that at least 50% of our new products are developed in collaboration with outsiders. So they set up this portal called Connect and Develop, which is still going strong. And, and what they do on there, which is so brave, and, and which I other companies are doing, but not many companies as big as Procter & Gamble, is they list all their, all their problems, everything they are looking for help with, they list. And the idea of actually sharing that information in public is, is quite, it's a big thing for a massive multinational. So for example, if you go online, you can find that Procter & Gamble are, are bothered about how to keep probiotics alive in dry food. Um, <laughs> and they're bothered about how to find a whitening product um, for, for teeth that doesn't contain peroxide. So, so when you go on there, it sort of tells you that, okay, Procter & Gamble only sell whitening products that contain peroxide. So, so you're learning stuff about the company that maybe their marketing people wouldn't want you to know. But, but they basically decided that, that they need to grow as a company and they need to find the real sort of geniuses out there to come in and help them with their problems. They decided they can share this stuff and it's, and it's going to be, they're going to benefit from it. Yeah, the other thing that comes up in, in that sort of practice as well is going back to your passion you're doing is getting jobbing scientists that are working in their own time to solve these problems, but they're collaborating in groups, with, in peer groups with people that they probably often wouldn't meet. So it also plays on one of the other things you picked on earlier. The passion thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, it's so hard dividing them all up actually, because they all kind of blend into each other. Uh, what's that called again? What's that? Can anyone go on that one? Yeah. Connect and develop. Yeah. There was a, a, a guy bought a gold mine in uh, South Africa. Mm. And, uh, red Court Mining. I oh, know it's not Red Court, 
the geology was, was so twisted it couldn't extract a, a cost. And so we put it on the internet, didn't you? And some yeah. geologists from Europe yeah. said, oh no, you can do it like this. And, and they actually turned a loser into a, a, a billion dollar business. Was well, that called for mining? It may have been a It's in uh, Chesbury's book. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, there, there, there are lots of great stories. I mean, there are ways of doing things that, that, that fail and, 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 and don't work, but I think, I think it's kind of opening up new business models. Um, and, and so Creative Commons, do you know what Creative Commons is? So, so that was really kind of inspired by the free software movement, and it was set up by um, Lawrence Lessig and a few other people in California in their, you know, sort of about five years ago, maybe, maybe a bit earlier than that. And, and it was this idea of like we shouldn't just have copyright on things. We should have some rights reserved. So you shouldn't just you shouldn't just reserve all rights. The author shouldn't reserve or the creator shouldn't reserve all rights. You should reserve some rights. So if you're a creator, for example, if you've created a lovely photo on Twitter, you could say, I'm happy for other people to use this photo as long as they mention my name. So or whatever. Or, or I'm not happy for people to use it, or I'm not happy happy for people to draw all over it and borrow. But you can say exactly what you want people to do with, with your stuff and, and creative commons that comes creative commons movement is all about that and now we've also got the creative science movement which is all about sharing information in science so I think people on the human genome project are collaborating and, and sharing information and, and instead of and developing patents that they're, they're actually just developing slightly different licenses that, that are less less strict and that's just a nice quote from Joe Foyle's creative commons it's um, there's this realisation that in lots of cases, having less control and giving wider access to what you're working on, there is a benefit, and you can learn from the mistakes of others just as they learn from your mistakes. Okay, so I think that's... Sorry, I can speed it up a bit at the end, but I hope that's given you a bit of an idea about the different divisions of the book. And there's lots of other stories in there. I'm really bad at remembering the stories, but there, there are nice stories in there. So. I think there's a nice story in the, um, uh, in the, the crowdsourcing, the generosity... Um, 